Hi, everyone. Welcome to our latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. Um, I completely forget what number we're at. Jason, where where are we? Is this, is this 90 something? Oh, some... A big number. <laughs> a big number. A big number. <laughs> And and today, oh, first day of December, we oh. it's the start of the Christmas season. That's why I have my flowers. Um, <laughs> well, I'm delighted to be joined by Fiona Balloch, hey. City of Glasgow College. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and I'm I, I'm really excited about the learning standard and all the work that you've been doing. Yeah. I mean, this is this is I mean, and and there's been a lot, a lot. So I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I'm just going to hand over to you and learn more. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. I'm Fiona Balloch. Hello. You probably saw in the link to get into this session, you had sneaky links put in there, one link to the learning standard and one to my fantastic lecture development website. Did you have a chance to have a sneaky peek at that? I'm gonna share my screen with you now. And let's have a quick look. We're gonna be talking today about the online learning standard at City of Glasgow College. Um, I work in the, le uh, the, the, le the Learning and Teaching Academy in the college, and I'm part of a lecture development team. Now, we have a learning standard in the college, and that's been adapted from Dundee and Angus College Remote Learning Standard, which you may be familiar with, which in turn, as far as I can see, was adapted from University College London Connected uh, Learning Baseline. And there's credits for the, um, both of those things within the, the standard itself, if you want to go and investigate them further. So our standard basically has um, a variety of sections. Let me move my face out of the way. So if you've had a little look at the website, these are the 10 sections in the standard. And it's a standard for all online courses within the City of Glasgow College. It's based on a website, a Google site, and there's an accompanying checklist as well, which drags all the criteria off that site. So let's have a quick jump to the website itself um, before we talk about how we're supporting lecturers to meet that standard. Okie dokie, here we are. So this is our um, our site. Um, blurb at the bottom, sorry, sorry, blurb on the first page, and at the bottom you'll see the, the links to Dundee and Angus and to UCL. But I'd like to focus on the different categories in our website. You'll see these at the top, our 10 categories. We'll just do a, a little whistle stop tour of these, but you have the links already on the CDM website, so please go in and have a good nosy through these in your own time as well for more information. So, um, for example, to make this a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing, um, they're all organised in the same way, each of the 10 categories. So, for example, structure, how we're structuring our online courses. There's a, an over, overarching sentence at the beginning which summarises um, what this is about. So it's about navigation, sequencing of activities, for example. And below that, there's bullet points of the kind of granular level of what um, uh, lectures are expected to do with the online courses in order to meet the standard. Our next section is orientation. So how uh, learners orient themselves, um, how they're expected to learn and engage, including contacts with key members of staff. And again, below that, detailed bullet points of what the lecturer has to be doing in their online courses in order to meet this learning standard. You'll see throughout this a lot of references to Moodle. We're in Moodle at the college at the moment, but of course we're also using other college supported tools. And our third section, communication. Um, communication um, with and between students. And you'll see reference here, for example, to usual things like announcements and forum and Q&A, et cetera, as, but as well as more general things, for example, what should be in a communication statement in your online course. So it's very specific. In the Learning and Teaching Academy, in the lecture development team, the areas we focus on very much are on assessment and engagement and sharing of best practice between lectures about how these aspects of the learning standard can be achieved. In terms of assessment, um, the learning standard focuses very heavily on tools for assessment and anti-plagiarism, as you might expect, big focus, of course, on turn it in, on rubrics, for example, on sh um, assessment scheduling to lower assessment burden, using middle calendar and that sort of thing. 
Our next section in the learning standard focuses on resources, internal and external, because we're Moodle, but we're not only Moodle. We've got a lot of um, other college supported tools which are encouraging lectures to link from, from their Moodle course, linking out to other learning tools. But in the resources section, we're also focusing on library resources, open resources, and of course, anti-plagiarism resources. And the next section is cross-platform compatibility, bit of a mouthful here, but basically this is one of our key sections all about um, how things are viewed for accessibility um, in terms of how it's viewed on mobile devices and um, PDFs, etc. The media section though in this whole standard is accessibility. And one of the main reasons we wrote and in the first place apart from our massive move to online learning is to ensure we're all totally compliant with the new um, accessibility legislation, which is swept through further education. So um, in terms of accessibility, you'll see a lot of bullet points here, but they're all covering quite small areas. Um, and these are in detail here. After that, we go on to talk about legal. Um, that's copyright, but it's also about data protection. And my personal favourite category, and where our lecture development team spends most of their time with, with lecturers, is in um, how um, to bring in student active participation in terms of student interaction um, in online learning resources and assessments. And this focuses on synchronous learning, asynchronous learning, and collaboration. And the final section, quality assurance, is about how students, stakeholders and staff are involved in the evaluation of learning and assessment. So that's a whistle stop of the 10 categories. But today, in the session today, we're looking at the 10 categories. We're looking at um, them in terms of how the lecture development team supports lecturers to meet this learning standard. That's really the focus of this se session. So that was a link to the website, but um, I mentioned checklists. Here's a quick nosy at the checklist we have. So all that stuff on the website, we've taken it off as well in a more accessible format for some people. It's no Google Doc, but of course that can just be shared in a PDF. And there you've got all that stuff in a checklist format. And what we'll often do in lecture development is we'll take just little nuggets of this checklist, isolated bits, and we'll look at specifically at those bits with the, the teams of lecturers we're, that, we're, that we're running sessions with. So in the session today, um, I'd like to focus on how um, our teams are um, supporting lecturers to meet this learning standard. In the, the uh, Learning and Teaching Academy that I'm a member of, there's three components. There's my team, lecture like development, there's learning technologies team and there's a libraries team. Now the learning technologies team are fabulous because they're really focusing on nuts and bolts of how you use the tools, the online learning and assessment tools in order to meet the learning standard, that's their bag. But my team, and this is what I want to focus on today, um, really looks at how we can help lecturers to share best practice in how they're meeting that standard. We're doing that in a variety of ways and I'll show you examples of these today. Um, first of all, through workshops, general for the college and more focused ones tailored to individual curriculum teams. Uh, we have a website full of resources and the link to that was on the College Development Network page and you can go and have a look at that in more detail hopefully after this session. Um, we have um, resources on that website and collaborative opportunities. We also have a Microsoft Teams which is still at sort of infancy and it'd be interesting to get your ideas of how we can develop that. And that's how we're using that to, to source best practice. And we suck out that best practice from the Microsoft Teams and we feed it back into our website again in a sharing area. And finally, um, we're looking at how we can support lecturers to meet this learning standard through our lecture integration program, which you might call lecture induction, and also through qualifications such as the PDA teaching practice in Scotland colleges. And we have got quite a groundbreaking course Glasgow College really heavily focused on teaching online and totally redesigned. 
So let's have a look at some of these ways in which, some examples of the ways in which we're supporting lecturers to meet the standard in the lecturer development team. So looking first of all <clears throat> at workshops, okay. so we're running workshops for the college in a variety of different ways. In June and August, we were running these workshops, we advertised them and any, every man and his dog could, could sign up for them. We had huge workshops, loads of people coming on for these things, very dynamic. But then as autumn progressed, we were advertising the workshops and getting far, fewer, far lower footfall. So while we started off with huge workshops with lots of people, we then moved into very tailored experiences only for curriculum teams. That's how we've developed. But at the beginning, we're running workshops on sections of the learning um, learning standard. So earlier we looked at the learning standard for assessment. What we tend to do in lecture development is we take the key points out of the learning, uh, one, one section of the learning standard. So for example, in the, um, in the learning standard section for assessment, in this puce colored here, these are the main things that the learning standard talks about. These are the main things that lecturers are expected to be compliant with in terms of their course design. So um, in, our, in the lecture development team, we're not teaching people what you click on to make a Moodle calendar. That's the learning technologies role. Instead, in our workshops, they're coming together to discuss and share best practice. And, and you'll see these um, sorts of discussion areas, exemplified in cream here at the side. So what's the glitches? What's the problems? Who can help who do what? What collaboration opportunities can we set up here and now between curriculum teams perhaps? Um, we focus very much on digital literacy support to get students familiar with using the calendar, with to be happy with using Turnit in the Moodle assignment. What digital literacy support do we have to build into our course at the point of need? Um, examples of how we can schedule assessments and um, using what sorts of tools to lower the assessment burden. Um, what feedback have you had from students on using Turnitin? What feedback have you had from students on that particular marking scale or rubric? And um, what's the best practice and feedback um, for, um, for, for a summative assessment? Um, what, what are your favourite frequently used comments? This sort of sharing opportunity, which is not covered by the the step-by-step -step how to run by le um, learning um, uh, technologies. That's very much what the lecture development team is, is in charge of fostering. It's that collaborative sharing, um, because the more, the more I work in, in lecture development, the more I realize that most of the great ideas don't come from me or my team, they come from the lectures themselves. And it's really to bring that out in the college. So we have these general uh, workshops focusing on one area of the learning standard. And then we have specific things only for specific curriculum teams. This is the menu we put out last month. So all curriculum heads in the college are sent a menu of, um, of workshops for them to cherry pick from. At team meetings, they go over this and they decide if any of these are relevant for um, their curriculum team at this point in time. And we, we run these workshops to, to learn to share best practice and develop ideas only within their curriculum teams, but all of these areas are related to an aspect of the learning standard. Now, all these workshops have resources at the back end of them, and you had a link to our website in the College Development Network webpage, and I'd like to jump to our website now. Our lecture development website for staff, and it's an open site, it's a Google site, so anyone in the world can, can jump in and interact with the resources we have there. You're very welcome to have a look at the resources. Um, these are the areas we have in our website. Lecture integration, or you may know as lecturer um, induction, how to teach online, learning tasks and tools. Um, by the way, for our learning tasks, we have adopted in the college um, UCL's ABC Learning Design. So the six learning types from that, it, it, that's how we're, 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 we're categorizing our learning activities for online learning um, in the college and in our, our, our learning standard. We also have a section specifically on, teach, uh, on assessing online, sharing practice and our qualification. So um, let's have a look first of all at um, how to teach online. Let's jump to our website. 
make that a little bit big, a little bit smaller there, and um, just show you the sections on the website. So um, our home section of the website, you'll see our different categories there you can jump to, and you have a drop down menu for the different pages. So let's first of all go to how to teach online. So the format for this, you've got Google Slide Deck, so Googleized, and um, just just for open accessibility, really. So um, you have um, Slide Deck um, for each section, and it's divided into learning design, planning a unit, uh, planning a class, um, digital literacy, meta skills. That's our three section. And um, below each of section, there's a drop down collapsible text which shows how the cut following resources meet the learning standard. If we go into one of the slide decks, let's just go for that one. In, uh, maintaining engagement in online courses. Let's just have a quick nosy at that one. Each of our resources, which are used in our workshops, have a section where it pulls out an area of the learning standard and talks about how the learning standard is met in these resources and in the workshop. So this one focuses on structure and orientation and communication and student active participation. So all of our resources on our website are cross-referenced to the learning standards. So it's, it's a question of everything has to be aligned. I think that's absolutely crucial with these sorts of initiatives. Every single thing we do in lecture development, in every workshop, in every resource, Everything comes back again and again to the learning standard. I'd like to have a look at another section in our website, which is learning tasks and tools. So I mentioned earlier, we're focused around ABC learning design. So if you're familiar with that, you know, it's collaboration, discussion, practice, acquisition, production, investigation. We also throw in Google tools at the bottom for good, good measure here. So with these um, uh, uh, learning types, the way that um, we bring in um, the learning standard is we have a slide deck for each of the, the learning types. And then we have an interactive document, which all of you, external and internal, can, can collaborate and, and contribute to. So if we open up the slide deck for this, these can be run as workshops or just dip in resources for educators. Again, um, the, early on, it shows um, what part of the learning standard these um, collaborative activities relate to, and they relate to the student active participation part of our standard. And beside that, I haven't looked at this for a while, so I wonder what's going to be there. This is a Google Doc that anyone in the world can access and can contribute to. It's editable. Please go in there if you want any time and put in your own ideas. Each of our learning types has a collaborative doc where anyone can give examples of activities. So um, this is the collaboration. So we're looking for collaboration activities. We're asking people to put their name, what subject area they work in, um, their email if they want to collaborate further later on. What is the activity you're describing and what's a digital tool? Uh, let's see who's got things here. Okay, there's someone from Nautical and STEM have put an activity. Got marketing, well, that's pretty well populated. Visitor attractions, nautical, anonymous, that's okay. Um, we've got visual communication, yeah, civil litigation, okay. So lots of lectures from around the college. I think probably all of these are college based, I'm not sure about these two, and um, have put some ideas in there. This is one of our main ways that lecturers can become familiar with our message here and how perhaps um, ABC Learning Design aligned to the learning standard can be brought in and integrated within course design. So we have our website where people can start collaborating on, but we also have Microsoft Team. Um, we've got various teams, as I'm sure you have in your institutions, but the main team we're, we're working with for the integration of the learning standard is a team called Innovations and in Learning. And the two channels that, that are my focus are the assessment and feedback channel and the Teach Meet Hub. Um, so this is where we're encouraging lecturers to go in and to 
populate um, these channels with their own little videos they're making of their best practice about how they're aligning to and meeting the learning standard and tips and activity ideas, even textual, doesn't have to be video. Um, the, um, the TeachMeet Hub um, in particular, um, it has been a, a great source of, of, of ideas. We started as a college running Teach Meets Live, you know, like everyone comes in to a live session, you do five minutes each, like a picture picture, you know, and it's very dynamic with lots of noise and you get ideas. And that worked so well in June and August, but now people just don't have time. So we've taken the decision to move our Teach Meets to an asynchronous version, and it's going pretty well, and that surprised me. So asynchronous teach meets basically is you go to a teach me area of a team, Microsoft team, and you're populating your own asynchronous videos into that team. And what we've done is we then have a look there and we cherry pick out from that team and put the best stuff back into the website. And I'll just show you that now. It's in our shared practice session section of our website. So in the shared practice section of the website, um, first of all, a wee blurb that shows how sharing practice um, contributes to a course evaluation and relates to the learning standard. Everything comes back to the learning standard. And below that, we've got information about our next live teach meets. And by the way, the next one's the seventh, there'll be a link going up and everyone's very welcome to join in on that. And a recording of a past traditional type of half hour teach meet with five minute sessions. But below that, we've got our asynchronous stuff. And this is what we've culled from our Microsoft team. It's information there about how to join the team. And by the way, you can join as a guest if you're not from our college. Now, so we've, we've started to curate examples from the Microsoft team. And we just look for common themes rather than trying to shoehorn them into categories. And they're, for example, engaging students, board tools, videos for acquisition, or using the ABC learning design terminology, quizzing for practice. So that, that's, that's what we've got at the moment. We're just gonna start curating this stuff in. Um, one thing we found particularly useful is, you know how sometimes you ask a lecturer to please make a video of their best practice and they think, oh, and they'd be hum and haw about it. And it takes takes ages to try and to get the, the final thing out of them. But what I've done is if I, if I find someone who's just fabulous and got some great ideas, I just say, do you mind if I just zoom you and we have a quick chat about it? And I'll record it and I'll send you the link. And if you like it, we'll put it up on the website. If you don't like it, we'll delete it. That's just gold. We get it first take, first time, we get some great ideas. And the fabulous Suzanne is an example of that. Gosh, what that's a great video to watch. What a cracking advice about teaching large classes on Zoom. It's just wonderful. Um, and for example, also with uh, Sarah Lovell as well. So have a look at some of these examples on our website and you can see how our lectures from across the college are, are embracing the standard and exemplifying that in their ideas. Now, our final um, aspect of um, how we are promoting the standard is through our qualifications. I mentioned we have lecture integration, which is lecture induction, but we also have the PDA teaching practice in Scotland's colleges. And um, that's, I think, a pretty groundbreaking course. It's been totally redesigned to focus not only, but mainly on online learning and teaching, really a great benefit to our, our new lecturers in our college. And throughout the activities they're doing in our synchronous mode of this course, which is taught on Zoom, um, they're doing activities whereby they're, they're um, evaluating what they're doing in terms of our learning standard. If you're familiar with um, the PDA teaching practice, you'll know that you have one of the assessments is you've got to design a program plan, or you might call that a unit plan. So um, here's one of our um, examples um, of our activities. The other week, actually. So. Um, so the, the lectures, new lectures in the college are asked to look at the learning standard and we just, we suck out the learning standard. This has got 15 key areas from the learning standard, key criteria, and they're going to be evaluating their learning and um, uh, their, their programme plan or unit plan against those criteria. Just in a nice light way 
to get into the learning standard. Now this one is, um, they copy their smiling cat and they place the smiling cat against three, only three of the criteria from below, which um, their program plan does or could most easily meet. And they have to copy the picture of the vomiting boy. I don't know why I chose that. And um, so the, they put three vomiting boys, a vomiting boy against three of their criteria, which their program plan would struggle to meet. And this is these are the results from the last time a group did that. So everyone populates that live together, and then after they've populated it, then the the the, the people with the smile who are smiley cats tell the vomiting boys how perhaps give them tips for how they perhaps they could meet that criteria and they exchange best practice and ideas. It's not a question of the tutor telling them how to do it. The ideas always come from the room. The ideas always come from the room. So that's an example of how familiarization with the learning standard is brought into everything, including into our uh, courses, for example, our PDA course. So um, the, the standard itself is essentially to um, promote a, 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 an even quality of learning teaching assessment across the college in, in terms of our online provision and also to meet um, the accessibility criteria um, uh, statutory requirements and of course um, our professional standards for lectures in Scotland's college. And um, that's all of our information today and I'd like to really open up to questions because what I would love is to pick people's brains today about how perhaps um, your advice you would give us and how we can even better um, encourage lecturers to share practice to, to comply with um, the, the learning standard and to further develop the learning standard. Um, over to you. That's brilliant, Fiona. We have, we have three, four minutes of the session left and the recorded part for questions. So does, does anyone have some questions or suggestions uh, for Fiona? And, and just before you start, I have never seen Vomit Boy used in such a good way. That's, oh, that's, I... <laughs> it's, it's, it's such, but it's such a clever idea where you're, you're grouping all the people who are struggling with certain areas and then identifying somebody with a good idea and getting them to share that with a group. That's, that's, that's an idea I'm totally stealing. That's <laughs> just, it's, it's just, it's very, very clever. Um, and, and one, one other thing I just want to squeeze in. I remember coming to um, like a teach meet session that City had run earlier mm -hmm. and you'd, you'd talked through about the use of Flipgrid as yeah. a really good way to, to communicate and send short videos. Have you, have you found an uptake at the college through that? And have, has that been employed within this kind of structure of content that you have? An update, uh, an uptake on Flipgrid. On Flipgrid, yeah. People using yeah. that to share. Flipgrid has been used a lot. It's used a lot in travel and tourism. That's our biggest department for using that. But really, I've been promoting it widely for any any subject which has got oral presentations or has got anything with doing more physical stuff. You know, demos or fine art department. You know, that's brilliant when you're just you're videoing yourself doing something, doing a drawing, doing a five minute something. Absolutely fantastic. We're only promoting it for formative assessment though, and for, for, for learning activities, not for summative. I'm a bit worried about doing that for summative, but for because obviously you're seeing everyone else's work, you know? So I've not got a way around that yet, but yeah, absolutely for formative, fantastic, yeah. And, and the other question I'm just going to squeeze in quickly here is just for the video, really, uh, and I'll put links into uh, against the video as well that you'll find down below if you're watching the video. Um, you, you mentioned that you're running like a series of open workshops around a variety of areas. If I'm coming to the city of Glasgow site, where can I find a list of those workshops? Because we've seen them in the past and you know we've promoted them and I, I think they're excellent. And it's fantastic that you're opening that those resources up as well as the resources in, in the standards and the Learning and Teaching Academy. So where, where can I find a list of upcoming um, workshops? I'll, I'll put a link, for, I'll send you a link and you can put that Brilliant. on the College Development Network thingy. Okay, fantastic. So I'll need to go and look for that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, any questions uh, for Fiona? I feel Emma has a burning question. I can see it on her face, Emma. Emma, you just definitely. Not really a question. Um, just that, that we're kind of doing the same thing that you've just done. <laughs> um, Where are you from, Emma? From West College, Scotland. So we've been looking at the learning standards as well and yeah. um, converting them from the Dundee and Angus too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what you're doing looks fantastic, actually. Um, and it's, 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 
it's taken what we have done and expanding it more. So I may borrow some of your ideas. Very welcome. <laughs> Very welcome. And also, um, if you want to collaborate to share, absolutely. Ideas, you know, because it's all about you know everyone just working out, putting together lots and lots of possible ideas that might suit, suit one college more than another. Yeah, yeah fantastic. But I've, I've got a feeling there's bits missing that we're not doing. And I'd love, to, and we're all trying to think what these might be. So any creative suggestions would be really welcome. For yeah, me. what we find is it's difficult to get people to to give us their ideas. So yes. what you were saying um, about your, your lecturers being able to put it in, it seems like a really good idea and having that conversation with them on Teams. That, that's been that's been gold. Just just saying, I'm going to buzz you on Teams and I'm going to buzz you on Zoom and I'll record it and I'll, and I'll chuck it if you don't like it. It's, it that's been great. Sometimes because, they, you know, they don't realise that what they're doing is best practice, is a really good idea. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And Fiona, and, one of the key things is you've you've released everything under an open license. You've got that Creative Commons by license. So the fact that from the outset you've started with this cultural mindset that you're going to share and you're going to collaborate with other people, I I, I think that's just fantastic. That's what I would dearly love is for people to go on to our lecture development site and start adding their own stuff. Because it'd be just fantastic if I went into those Google Docs and I saw ideas and activities from all of you. Be, and our lecture just love it if we saw that. Just be fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant idea. Okay, sorry. Um, that's that's all we have time for in this recorded part of the Virtual Bridge session. So if you're joining us via YouTube, thanks for joining today and hopefully we'll see you a live session in the future. But until then, please, thanks to everyone for joining today and stay safe until the next session.